Hello, Mate is Rife Nation. We've got Susan Bratton, and it's going to be such a fun show. She is an intimacy expert and sex expert to millions all over the world, and it's such a privilege to have her on 159 shows. We've never had a sex expert on the show. It's going to be fun. We're going to talk about the yoni. We're going to talk about the lingam. We're going to talk about pompois, if I'm saying that right. It's going to be an amazing show. And uh, thank you, Susan, for coming on the show on The Major Throw because you're so courageous in your calling and you've demystified so many things. And I've learned so much from you already listening to so many podcasts. And we're going to have you here in South <laughs> Africa, hopefully one time because you're it's on your bucket list. But welcome to The Major Throw Show. Oh, it's so fun to be here. And I can tell. Steve, you've been doing your homework. This is going to be a juicy episode. I can tell you've got a lot of good questions for me. I've got a lot of good questions. And the first one I want to start with is a transformative mm -hmm. process that's happened for a female and a male so that people can relate to the story because so many people are desperate with their intimacy lives, their sex lives. And I think it's just so important that you bring hope to people. Yeah. Good. Okay, great. So the first thing that I would say is that it is never too late to have a renaissance in your relationship, in your sex life, that you can, and that chemistry is co-created and sexual soulmates are co-created. They are not something that, you know, you have to have when you start. So wherever you are, there is massive possibility for you to truly have a sex life that is a thriving part of your vitality, your purpose, and your pleasure. So I'd say that's that's the most important thing. And what I have really been doing for the last couple of decades is helping people find their way to each other in a way that feels safe and sexy and a way that feels sexually satisfying with each other that doesn't have performance anxiety and is very honest and genuine and present and heart connected. I like to say what I do is transform having sex into making love. Yeah. And I like to also understand the difference between the male body and the female body, both the parts, the anatomy and how they work and how we can get them to work really well together, but also just the difference between the male and female because the male is testosterone dominant and the female is estrogen dominant. And they do, even in the world where we, that where we live today, where we are working on equality and parity for all people across the gender spectrum there are fundamental differences in the body <laughs> that make our approach to our sexuality need to be different we need to understand each other if we're yeah. in a, a heterosexual kind of a relationship and yeah. The bulk of people are, and I tend to talk to a couple being a male and female pair bonded couple, but everything that I'm saying works for everyone across the spectrum and works in any way that you can apply it to your life. So I honor the spectrum while I speak to the polarity. Does that Beautiful. sound Beautiful. fair? Beautiful. That's beautiful. So give us a story of a yoni or a lingam that transformed in yeah. terms of their intimacy, because I think people need to, they're desperate. And I get, I mean, I've been in functional medicine 24 years and I get so many people say, Hey doc, you know what? I need something. The, you know, the boat isn't floating or a woman coming and saying, listen, I need this. I need this, this magic, yeah. you know, elixir of something. So tell us some stories that people can get excited about. Yeah. So, um, what I find is the most common paradigm, though this is changing, is that there's a couple and he wants sex all the time and she doesn't want to have sex with him and they end up getting divorced because and he moves on to somebody younger that still wants to have sex and she leaves the relationship and maybe has... Uh, a new boyfriend, maybe somebody younger, or maybe somebody, uh, maybe a woman instead of a man or what have you, because she's so disillusioned with mm. the sex that they had in their marriage. And this is so common. It is a trope. And it's disappointing because, like I said, I believe that everyone can have the most incredible sex life if you know some fundamental things. 
And so often when I'm talking to people and I don't work with anyone one-on-one, -on -one. I'm not a therapist or a counselor or anything like that. I run two companies. One of them is a publisher of passionate lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills. And I have an expertise in what I would call sexual regenerative therapies and treatments and sexual biohacking, which is the body side of things. Like yeah. if the parts don't work or they hurt or what have you, how do we fix them so that we mm. can use the, the communication techniques and the pleasuring techniques to have great sex? Because if your body's not working, it is not, you're not going to get anywhere. Exactly. And then the hardware is not working. The have... software is not going to work. Exactly. And so, and I also have a supplement company for libido supplements and blood flow supplements, because most people think, oh, I just, my, I just don't have any desire. I don't have libido. I just don't want sex or I want sex and my partner doesn't want sex and I'm super frustrated. And so this whole idea of we have mismatched libido, it's total crap. <laughs> if you are healthy, if your gut microbiome is good, if you have good communication and you're honest and both parties can hear what needs to be said and say what needs to be said and be appreciative of the information that's given, and you begin to learn techniques, then you can really start to have this kind of incredible sex that is what I call the upward pleasure spiral, where sex keeps getting better for you both the whole time because you've got all these things in place. And this is the typical thing that happens is that a, a woman doesn't want sex with her partner. He feels like she's, you know, she feels like, oh God, he's always horny. He's always begging me for sex. He's always, you know, trying to figure out how to get sex. And, and he's like, well, she's frigid and she's shut down and she doesn't want me. And I feel rejected. And now I'm angry with her. And so I'm going to emotionally check out. And she's like, I used to have a friend and now he's not even my friend. And we're basically just raising our kids are, you know, together in this house and we're cranky with each other and everybody's grumpy. And I'm constantly trying to avoid him. So he doesn't ask me for sex and our kids know we're not happy and we're being shitty parents. And I mean, this is the story that plays out in bedrooms all over the world. Yeah. And yeah it's super easy to fix that story. It's super easy to transform that story. And it comes from understanding and getting in the world of the other party and understanding that your approach and what you're doing hasn't worked and there's a better way. And the thing about living in the male body is you don't know how it is in the female body and vice versa. If women understood how hard it is to be constantly horny and feel rejected, they would have much more mercy on their men. Mm. And if men could understand how we get penetrated so often too soon that we can't stand to be penetrated anymore and that we don't have great orgasms from it because our partners don't know what to do and we don't know what to do. If we could just have them understand how to open us, how to make our yoni flower and open like a beautiful lotus, then that would be so much better. And so what I try to do with my techniques and my communication skills is bridge that gap between mm. what, what we're doing and all the mistakes we're making with each other and what are the good techniques and strategies that allow you to have great sex? And they come from three different areas. They come from understanding how libido, desire, and arousal are really a matrix and they're different things. It's kind of like mind, body, spirit. Yeah. It's very similar to that. Um, and once you start to understand the difference between libido, desire, and arousal, like I, I got an email from a woman just yesterday that I have to still reply to. And she said, you know, I, I work out, I'm doing red light, I'm doing cryotherapy, I'm taking supplements, I'm, I'm, um, I've had some CO2 lasering done on my vaginal canal to try to make the pain go away. I'm on bioidentical hormones, but I just don't have any desire for my partner. Like once we get started, I usually have a good time, but I, I never want to have sex. Mm. And I thought to myself, here, she thinks she's supposed to act like a man. Yeah. Women don't have very much spontaneous desire. Mm -hmm. We really have responsive desire. Wow. We really need 
our male bodied partners to carry the torch and to make the offers, make them small to begin with, not offers for intercourse, but offers for pleasure and to be fun and to be emotionally present for us and to soothe us and to help us get relaxed and surrender. Um, because we don't start in arousal. We start by our arousal begins in relaxation, not in push our buttons, spin our dials kind of thing. And, and our male body partners are like trying to get us turned on, you know, <laughs> and, and they think, well, she doesn't want me because she never initiates. Yeah. And so for a lot of guys, I say, if she never initiated again, like I ask a lot of guys, do you take the trash out every week? Yeah, I, that's my job. Do you take it out without even asking your wife if you need to? Yeah, of course. It's just my job. And I'm like, have you been taking the trash out for like the last 27 years every single Sunday night? Yeah, of course. And how about the rats? Do you kill all the rats that get in the house or the snakes or the scorpions or the spiders or whatever? Do you do? Is that your job? Yeah, yeah that's my job. I mean, I wouldn't want my wife to have to kill the snakes. I'm like, okay, so what if your other job was you always initiate? What if you're always the one that's making the offers? What if she never initiates? What if it just happened that a spider went by and she whacked it with something? That'd be fine, right? <laughs> what if you're walking by and she's like, okay, let's have a start. But what if she never does? What if that's your job? Yeah. Would you be feeling like a victim? You don't feel like a victim having to take out the trash. Yeah. You don't feel like a victim having to kill the, the rats. Why would you feel like a victim if you have to initiate, mm -hmm. if it's your job? It really reframes things. But then they're like, but if I offer her sex, she's not going to want sex. And I'm like, well, that's because you're already horny. You already have an erection. You're ready to go. You're testosterone dominant. And she's not. She's estrogen dominant. She's worried about things. She needs things to be safe before she can relax. She needs to get out of her head, which is going a million miles an hour and into her body. And that's your job is to help her do that. So how can you help her do that? Make her small offers. Would you like a glass of Chardonnay and a foot rub? Would you like to snuggle here on the couch with me and I'll hold you and pet you and you can tell me about your day. Yeah. Um, when you start with small offers with a woman, it helps her relax. And if you're not trying to get sex and by sex, I mean intercourse, if, if you're not motivated just to touch her when you want sex, if you play with her, if you lift her up and kiss her, if you move her body around, if you hold her hands on nature walks, if you grab her butt once in a while, if you tell her she's pretty and smart a lot, it makes you a lot more desirable to her when you're not just trying to get sex from her. Yeah, it's powerful. And so I, I mean, think those are some... It's very powerful. And I'm just going to jump in there because it just looks like yeah, this, you know, immediate like gratification, you know, this quick, you know, takeaways. And then you want to pull to deal with something. You want it immediately. You don't want to really like go on a journey and a pathway to like really treat this spouse or this partner of yours with absolute love and intent and care. Because life has become so quick and it's so immediate and I want it now and I want to download that movie now and I want to watch it now and I want to have pleasure now. But maybe it's a different journey that people have to understand when you're actually engaging your partner. Yeah. I also think that the idea that instead of having foreplay and sex, that you think about sex as all of the things and that there's mm -hmm. so much to be said you know there's a there's really a matrix in the female body of lips breasts and yoni and they work they're they're a single they're a single channel on a rheostat that turns up as you go <laughs> and for so many women for so many partners they haven't they, they maybe they kissed when they first got together they don't kiss mm. anymore mm. they haven't learned how to kiss Sometimes it's a little too much for her, all the like forcefulness and too, yeah. too intense for her because she's not ready. Maybe she needs kisses on the eyelids, kisses on the cheeks, yeah. kisses on her neck, kisses down her chest. Maybe she doesn't want you to grab her nipple and twist it. Maybe she wants you to stroke her shoulders, stroke her mm -hmm. arms, stroke her clavicles, stroke, stroke her sternum lift her breasts, cup her breasts, lightly squeeze them, brush your nipples over them. Mm. I mean, your fingers over the nipples, you know, um, it, it's this difference between the masculine and testosterone being full steam ahead, horny every day, single focused and goal oriented versus the female being mm. 
more responsive rather than spontaneous, more needing the slow warm up. Um, and ultimately, the slow warm up and the long pleasuring, you know, maybe you're making out and you're holding her in your arms and you're stroking her breasts and nipples while you're kissing her and she's got her hand on your lingam and she's stroking it and it's sweet and you're just lost in the kissing. I mean, how many people are even doing that? Yeah, that is true. You and know, they're just mm, jumping in, jumping in. And and just finish the story of that couple that like you've intervened now and before they've got divorced and they say, let's give it a go. Let's see Susan. Let's do a yeah. program. You've got so many resources, right. over 35 books you've authored. I mean, just so many resources online. We'll put all the you know, links to your websites and that, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's just so phenomenal. But tell us a positive outcome. You've told us the negative outcome of that couple. What yeah. can they expect? I mean, can they expect 20 orgasms like women have 20 orgasms? I've learned that from you. I mean, I've just learned yeah. so much from you. Really. It's incredible. But, they you know, what are their Steve. objectives? What can they expect? Yeah. Well, that's one of the nice things is that there are 20 kinds of orgasms the male and female body can have, and you can spend the rest of your life just working on expanding your orgasmic pleasure together. And I've noticed for most people that they have a mindset where, for example, especially in heterosexual monogamous relationships, um, she'll say, well, I'm just not the kind of woman who can orgasm from intercourse. And and then he's like, well, I guess she's not, but we're still going to have intercourse. Mm -hmm. And so I guess we'll just, you know, maybe I'll give her some oral and then, you know, I'll come inside her and that's what we do. And it's a mindset issue because all orgasms are a learned skill. And so thinking that she can't means she never will. And so I really like people to think if you are one of those people who thinks you can't orgasm from intercourse, you just haven't learned how yet. That's all it is. Or if you have an orgasm at all yet, that's just, you just need to learn how. And so there's a couple of fundamental things that couples need to do to really begin to have great sex together. And this works whether they're your date or your mate. And the first one is that you have to be willing to really be honest with each other about anything and everything. And that she has to feel encouraged to say whatever she needs or feels or wants. And he has to be encouraged to not take it personally, but to take it as information, not failure, but feedback. And so he can do an even better job allowing her to surrender to her pleasure. And then he can become more present with her and less in his head and worried about performance. So honesty is the single number one thing. And one of the techniques that I offer that I give away for free is called the Sexual Soulmate Pact, P-A-C-T, sexualsoulmatepact.com. And it's basically an agreement between lovers and how you do it and compensate for her fears as the female and his fears as the male. And it overcomes all those problems. And it's, it's just a free download. I don't have to go into it because I can just give it to you now and you can go get it later and we can keep moving forward in the conversation. But number one thing is being able to say whatever you want to say during intercourse, during and after, during sex, during lovemaking, during foreplay, during and after, just being able to be honest with each other. That just breaks the ice and mm. connects and connects your hearts and makes you deep in your intimacy. So honesty and communication is the number one sex technique, the sexual soulmate pact. I could tell you a million orgasm techniques that won't work at all until you can be the person who can hear and say anything with your lover. So that's like the most fundamental skill of anything. And I give it away for free. Good. Sexual soulmate pact. And then the second piece that I think is really, really helpful for the difference between the male and the female libido and arousal patterns, which are different, is that is yoni massage and lingam massage. And yoni massage is really, really important because when you give a woman unlimited yoni massages, she can have them whenever she wants, and it doesn't mean you have to have intercourse. That if she wants more, she can have more, but if she doesn't, and all she wants is a yoni massage, that she can have that. Because the male penis, I mean, if you, if you imagine a banana as the penis, half of his penis sticks out of his body and half goes in, so it's twice as big as you see. And the entire inside of the penis is filled with erectile tissue. 
And if you opened his banana up and you took out all that tissue and you pretended it was like Play-Doh and you take the banana and you make it a circle with a point at the top, you just curve it and make it a point. That's what's inside the yoni. That's all the erectile tissue. She has as much erectile tissue as he does, but it's in nooks and crannies. So he gets erect in two or three minutes. She gets erect in 20 or 30 minutes. So she, if she hasn't had orgasms from intercourse, it's because she's never had a complete clitoral erection. And it's actually three erectile tissue structures in her vulva too, the clitoral, urethral, and perineal. So we each have three structures. Yours are straight shots, mine are little curvy lanes, and it just, my response is slower. And so if you initiate and I respond and you give me the time and the stimulation to get the blood flowing into my yoni, then I will outlast you by a mile and come and come and come and come and come. And so it's moving away from rushing. It's the slowing down. It's getting the blood flowing. We are, it's the physical situation of actually allowing her to get fully turned on before she's penetrated or before you try to rush her that are so, so important. I mean, in all honesty, those two things, the honesty and the sexual semi-pact and the yoni massages, which if you want to know more about yoni massage, I've got a couple of resources. Mm -hmm. One resource is on betterlover.com. I have a whole series of videos on yoni massage. Um, you just go to betterlover.com and type in the word massage and you'll get the yoni and lingam massage videos and they're free. The second resource that I have is, is an online program that I publish that's called expandherorgasmtonight.com. And Steve, if you want this or any of my mm. programs, just let me sure. know sure. after the show and I'll set you up with a lifetime VIP account. Um, the the expandherorgasmtonight.com is actually um, a clitoral stroking technique that is manual. It's a manual clitoral stroking technique that uses five strokes, three opening strokes, a bread and butter stroke, and a closing stroke that you can incorporate into the general yoni massage. That is an art form that allows her to go into not just, not just to have an orgasm, like a dude has an orgasm where he just like gets excited, climaxes, and then he's done. A lot of women are having these types of orgasms too, where they're they're like one and done because her clit gets overdriven by stimulation and sensation. She needs it actually a lot lighter to actually allow herself to get into the moment of orgasm and then expand that moment of climax like time is taffy and you're pulling out the orgasm and extending it. You're actually expanding it. And then you do those clitoral strokes and she has another one and another one and another one. And they keep getting more intense, longer and more pleasurable until she's the woman who's coming for an hour under your hands. Wow. That woman who's coming for an hour under your strokes, she is going to be having the most incredible orgasms from intercourse. It's going to help her cross the gasm chasm, close that orgasm gap between how easy it is for him and how it's seemingly insurmountably difficult for her. It's not when she starts to get confidence about her orgasm, the right arousal, et cetera. And so I think that a lot of the stories that we hear of couples where it's like, well, she doesn't want to have sex anymore. I don't want to have sex with him. It's no good. These are the reasons why there's no honesty in communication. She doesn't get the time to get turned on. He's focused on, you know, just kind of getting off and he wants to do a good job, but he just doesn't understand how her body works and she doesn't either. Yeah, this is profound. You know, this awareness and education. I've got a son who's 19, a daughter who's seven. We need to be able to take the skills and strategies that you're giving us and start with how important it is because it's so important for a relationship and the why of intimacy. And I love the fact that you say making love. I mean, that is huge. That's yeah. connecting two people coming and having intimacy and connection, which is so profound. And, you know, I'll take you up on that because I want to educate my son. I want to spend time with him. And, yeah. you know, I wasn't educated in many, many ways. My dad is in a different generation. We wouldn't even speak about it, you know. So I think it's fundamentally important. And you're talking about, you know, tactics and strategies that are, and people don't know, people aren't aware. So without the, the awareness and the skills, how are you going to execute you're going to execute terribly and then you're going to just give up. And that's, I think, I think it's so profound with you with all the research sources that you're giving. And so 
Thank you. And I want to move on to sort of, you know, the biochemical part of it. I know you do supplementation. I've been using peptides. We do platelet-rich plasma, you know, at the practice for joints and that, and uh, not O shots or P shots, but it has its place. So now you're talking about, you've spoken about four play honesty. You've got to set a pack together. You've got to set your objectives together, which is very important. Now you've given us some strategies on the yoni massage. What about the biochemical stimulation and how part like in nutrition and those things that can be really helpful with nitric oxide and arginine and those type of things? Yeah, you got it. You know the stack. So what happens as we age is that we atrophy. Just as our face and skin wrinkle, our our vulvas desiccate. They dry up. The tissue starts, the volume of tissue starts to decline. Um, as our estrogen drops, we have uh, thinning of tissue, and that includes the thinning of the tissue in the vagina, especially in the opening to the vagina. They're called the introidal sphincter, and it becomes delicate and sometimes painful to have sex, um, intercourse. And um, also, our orgasmic intensity begins to decline. We have trouble getting to climax as we age, as the clitoral uh, tissue starts to atrophy. We also suffer from incontinence. Um, that's a very, very, very common thing for women as well. And then for our male body partners, they they end up having uh, their penis in a contracted state all the time where they stop having nighttime erections. They stop having regular intercourse. Um, they, they basically, the more that the penis stays in the contracted state, the more it atrophies. And so then they end up having erectile dysfunction, inability to get hard, inability to stay hard. Also, um, the most common type of ED is venous leak, which is essentially where the way the hemodynamics works in the penis, the blood flows in and it flows in so much that it actually pushes against the walls of the vascular system and locks off so that the blood stays in the penis. But if it can't lock off because of atherosclerosis, um, the plaque in the arteries and veins, then it can't lock off and the blood leaks back out and he's not hard. And one of the things that I think is really, really interesting is that men are very good at denial. They deny a lot of things. Like one of the most common things that I've seen in the couple of decades that I've been supporting men in their sex life is that their wife will leave them and they'll be stunned that she's gone. And if you ask her, she would have said, I told him like 50 times I was going to leave him if he didn't do whatever, or he didn't meet my needs or yeah. whatever. Like, I can't believe he's surprised that I left. And he's surprised. The other place I see that denial happen is is that they don't realize how soft their penises have gotten because it's this very, very slow decline. They, they think they're still firm when they're really not firm, when they can yeah. barely be firm enough for, for penetration. And in all honesty, that just doesn't feel great inside the vulva. And so guys are kind of fooling themselves that they've got everything okay because they can maintain, they can kind of get to an erection or they can use Viagra or Levitra or yeah. Cialis or what have you and kind of get hard for the moment enough to penetrate or they wear a penis ring or whatever to trap the blood in. That's, that's very suboptimal. Penises need to be thick, hard, heavy, veiny, coursing with blood and desire. And so I think that it's very important for men to also take care of their penile performance. So this is what's led me to kind of the three-legged stool of communication techniques, pleasuring skills, and sexual wellness, intimate wellness. Mm. The idea that you can extend your sex span as well as your health span. We're all talking mm. about longevity and the, yeah. you know, the extension of our health span. Well, let's have great sex till the day we die. Because for me at 61 years old right now, I'm having the best sex of my life by far. And I've done some of these regenerative therapies and so does my husband. So mm. Here are the things that we have found that work really well. The, the foundation of taking care of your genital system is blood flow. Blood flow for him and blood flow for her. Remember the banana. <laughs> we <laughs> got to keep the banana plumped up. It can't go, it can't get brown and spotty. And so um, as we age, by the time we're 50, we have half the nitric oxide production we had when we were 20. 
And so we just can't get the blood into our pelvic bowl to fill all of our genital systems. So what you want to do is eat leafy green vegetables and beetroot, not use an antibacterial mouthwash and not use acid blockers or proton pump inhibitors. You want high stomach acid, not low stomach acid. If you have acid reflux, you're eating too much sugar and carbs and drinking too much alcohol and you need to get your, 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 um, acid back up again, uh, so that it closes the esophageal sphincter. So this is how you keep your nitric oxide systems topped up, but you can also supplement. If you're under 40, supplementing with arginine. If you're over 40, supplementing with citrulline is really the best pathway for giving your body that extra fuel that it needs to convert into the nitric oxide, which is the gaseous signaling molecule that allows the blood to flow into your pelvic bowl. It also keeps you from having edema. It keeps your your blood pressure lower. It helps with blood to the brain, blood to the heart, blood for your workouts. I mean, you nitric oxide is a ground zero um, supplementation strategy for the aging person. It will inform and help every aspect of your health, including your hormone production, because your hormone production works on a nitric oxide pathway as well. So it is vital for you to have nitric oxide yeah. that's number one then Let me just jump in there because on... i think it's i think yeah, it's super ahead. interesting and you know in the last three years as a functional medicine doctor we you know i've been doing functional medicine for 15 years is that we're measuring amino acids now dried blood spot amino acids i'm seeing probably 80 percent of the people that i measure having low arginine low arginine they yeah. cannot produce nitric yeah. oxide That's across the board. Mm -hmm. Then the citrulline, valine, it's just become, and lysine has become an epidemic on the amino acids that they're not getting in their diets, which is fundamentally important for all the neurotransmitters, tryptophan, tyrosine, all these things for dopamine, serotonin. And so I've seen huge changes by giving the essential amino acids to people and it's changed the neurotransmitters and changed the nitric oxide. So it's super interesting that you mentioned that because I think it's fundamentally important for the nitric oxide oxide to maintain obviously your erect erection and then I, I just can't emphasize how important it is to see a good functional medicine doctor in combination here yeah i agree and interestingly enough your krebs cycle one of the components of the krebs cycle is arginine and when you're low in arginine you literally can't make atp and so your mitochondria can't make atp and that's what that's literally the energy your body uses to live And so when you're tired, it can go, it could literally go back to a lack of arginine in your Krebs cycle that's holding you back from making ATP. That's how important it is. So I I am with you, brother. And I don't even like essential amino acids. I like amino replete. I like all the amino acids. Um, So one of the things that I do is I take all the amino acids and I take them with vitamin C, interestingly enough. Um, And that's also because I take a lot of collagen um, and collagen needs vitamin C, copper, and zinc. So I take a good multivitamin. My supplement company, the two products I make in my supplement company are a multivitamin multimineral complex with methylated B vitamins that has libido botanicals built in. And I make a a citrulline based or from organic fruit and vegetables. I make a citrulline based nitric oxide supplement because those, I mean, if you're not getting the basics, don't add more shit, but I love amino acids, but I like the whole complete amino acid profile. I think the branch chain amino acids and things, it's Mm. not enough. And I agree with you. I think aminos are really an under, especially Mm. because you need to be working on building your muscle as you age, you have to be working extra yeah. hard to, for muscle growth and you need the amino acids for muscle growth. It's, it's Absolutely. vital. So I really like that too. I have to show you my muscle. Check this out. <laughs> that Looks bicep incredible. is popping. Yeah. Can and you believe I, that? I can see it. And, and I know your age, but I think it's, <laughs> you've been looking after your hormones for a long time, obviously exercising and gymming and making sure that yeah. I think you said in your, I think one of your podcasts or on your website that, you know, your sexual health, your libido is just a sign of optimal health. If that's not in place, then you got to look at your overall health. It's exactly right. It's the same. It's the other side of the same coin. Your libido is just, Oh, how's your health? As soon yeah. as your health gets better, I know when I don't feel well, I know when I've had a bad sleep or I know when I'm yeah. run down because I don't want sex. As soon as I want sex, I'm like, oh good, I'm back. 
she back. <laughs> she back. So come on, daddy, let's go. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good barometer. Mm. So you said uh, you were talking thoughts. about the first so, point and you're going to get on the second point now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so the nitric oxide is ground zero. And then the second piece is keeping your genitals work in good working order. And um, I think that bioidentical hormone replacement for women is really, really helpful. So um, especially intravaginal, either DH, DHEA or intravaginal estrogen, just stick the estrogen right in there. And while you're at it, get a script for testosterone and rub some, rub some testosterone right on your clit, because mm -hmm. that'll keep it nice and meaty and it'll keep your orgasms strong. And then you can also add things like, well, here in America, we have FemiWave, which is the same as Gaines Wave for men. And it's okay. basically a low intensity extracorporeal shock wave. It's a, it's an acoustic wave applied to the vulva that sends slight micro damage into the tissue, which generates, it's the hormesis that generates regenerative tissue volume and builds things back up again, helps shore up the pelvic bowl, helps reverse incontinence, improves lubrication, etc. I don't like the lasers. Okay. I think they're too damaging and they're only intravaginal and you need to have the whole vulva managed so the acoustic okay. wave is the way to go the stores machines and things like that if you can get your hands on them um and then for men the gains wave is the same treatment to the penile shaft as well as to the inside to get that buried shaft that we were talking about when we were envisioning the banana earlier um getting deep inside getting the buried shaft and getting in the perineum to help with prostate and flow and all of that kind of thing that's very very good and then for men I love a vacuum erection device called the Whopper. The it's Whopper. a penis pump by the Dr. Joel Kaplan company. It ships to South Africa, by the way. Okay, so you good. can get it at pumpswork.com, pumpswork.com. And I have a guide to penis pumping that also talks about the Gaines Wave, the Phoenix Pro, the, you know, all okay. of the different components, red light therapy for, you know, generating more uh, latex cells, et cetera, uh, improving testosterone response, improving recovery from penis pumping. But penis pumping is the easiest thing that a guy can do uh, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, no more than three times. You have to have recovery days because it uses progressive okay. overload. It brings in more blood carrying capacity into the penis. It expands the penile volume. It generates new vascularization that mm. also brings blood flow to the nerves in the penis. So a lot of men who age have sensation loss in addition to fir loss of firmness and erectile function. So what it does is you can think about it as being both a regenerative treatment, get you back to where you were, but if you keep pumping, you can use it for enlargement. It will actually make your penis bigger. If you pump a couple of times a week for 10 months to a year, you can grow your penis wherever you started. Even when you were 18, you can grow it 20 to 25% larger. Wow. The wow. penis is like a bicep. Sure. It works the same as a bicep. When you bring the blood flow in and you break that tissue down a little bit with the vacuum, then it regrows bigger. It's unbelievable. And there are clitoral pumps and vulva pumps for bringing blood flow into their lady pumps. And most women aren't going to do that, which is why I send them to the Femi Wave side of things. And there's also a vagina device that I recommend. It's at vaginadevice.com. And it is an intravaginal device that has photobiomodulation, red light therapy, sure. plus it also has warmth and vibration for Kegel toning and recollagenation of the vagina, wow. but it doesn't do the outer part of it. So that's why I like the acoustic wave, the Femi wave on the whole vulva. Okay. I think it's better, but these are all just choices, trade-offs, budget, you know, considerations, okay. but at least you know what the options are are that okay. you can do so you start with your blood flow then you add on your penis pump for your guy you add on your vagina device for your girl you add on your gains wave for your guy your femi wave for your girl what about prp i used to love it steve mm. i'm getting less and less enthralled with it because it's very good mm. 
For regenerative tissue, reversing atrophy, especially like the O shot in the clitoris, I would always add a P shot into the penis if I was doing gains waves or pumping, if I could afford it. But mm. I'm starting to be much more in love with things like, I don't know, exosomes, stem cells, mm. because mm. PRP is naturally inflammatory. That's the, yeah. that's that's what it does is it creates exactly. inflammation that calls your body to repair. And I'm like, can we skip the inflammation step and just go right to repair? Mm. And I'm yeah. kind of feeling like I'm moving toward the exosome stem cell side of things because they're not so inflammatory. Okay. I don't like the like, I have to hurt myself to make it better thing. Mm. I prefer to just make it better if I can. Yeah. So I'm always looking for what's the latest technology that's available. But if you're a guy and you are over 40, get the penis pump, get the whopper, go to pumpingguide.com and just get that. Okay. Just start pumping. It's self-care down there. You will love it. You'll start to get this heavy heft back in your penis again. You'll, you'll, you're going to want to like drop it on your wife's shoulder, you know, like <laughs> feel that like, it'll be really, it's really nice. Okay. And for women definitely do not skip the intravaginal estrogen and get lots of yoni massages. Um, that's a good place to start. And if you can't get a Femi wave and you have to do CO2 laser, do it, but it's not my favorite thing. Okay. Um, try the vagina device. If it can ship to where you live, mm. Um, those are the best regenerative things you can do, but you got to stay on it because mm. you got to get yourself back to where you were and you keep aging. Yeah, sure. So if you want to have a great sex fan, you must do mm. regenerative things to your genital system, just like you do facelifts, lasering, wear sunblock, mm -hmm. you know, all yeah. the stuff you're doing yeah. for your, for your care of the rest of your body. Brilliant. Well, what about two questions I got? Is that the V light that you're talking about, the intravaginal device that has the light and has the massage and the vibration? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It's at vaginadevice.com and it's okay. sold in different countries and it has okay. some different names. So if you go there okay. and you can't place the order where you live, you can email the company, tell them okay. I sent you and they'll give you a, a link because they make a special kit for me that they don't sell on their website that has some extra things in it. Okay. They'll try to get that for you in your country. Okay, brilliant. And then what about peptides? I've started injecting a lot of peptides. Yeah. What does the research say with regards to libido or sexual performance or just intimacy or orgasms with regards to peptides? Probably the number one peptide that is thought to be a sexual peptide is the PT-141, which runs on the melanotan pathway. So you get a tan and a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> the downside, <laughs> which is never bad, um, tan from the inside out, especially without any sun. But um, the downside to taking that is that it can make people nauseous. And okay. personally, unless you have some odd intractable erectile dysfunction that the gains wave, the penis pump, the pee shots, the nitric oxide didn't fix... And this is like a last resort. Well, I'm going to try a different pathway to my erection. Maybe I'm wired wrong or there's some weird thing with me. I don't recommend pep, the PT-141 because who wants to get nauseous before you have sex? What really you need to understand is that go way back to the beginning of our show where we talked about the fact that women don't necessarily have that spontaneous desire. We have responsive desire. And so when just give yourself a, just, just start pleasuring your body and it will start turning on and you will catch up. You've got to settle down and give it a try. Mm. You can't just shoot yourself with a peptide and expect to get horny. All the PT-141 does is give you an everted clitoral erection or everted penile erection. And everted is a word that means from the inside out. Mm. normally we get an erection where we're stroking the vulva, we're stroking the clitoris, we're orally pleasuring it, we're using vibration, you know, we're doing that. Oh, I mm. want to talk about vibrators. Um, that That's from the outside. We're sending sensation into the body. And by the way, you need to be thinking about orgasm and turn on and pleasure when this is happening because you can double your pleasure response by bringing the mind body connection to it. If you're just lying there waiting to get turned on and you're not 
talking dirty, talking sexy, thinking sexy things, feeling your body, keeping your head in the sensation, you're you're really never going to get to your full orgasmic potential. Yeah. The um, fMRIs that uh, Dr. Nan, what is her name? Nan Rice, she did with Dr. Barry Kamasarik show that the the body can respond as much to the mental stimulation as the physical stimulation. It lights up the brain exactly the wow. same if you think about getting turned on as if you actually touch your genitals. So the mind is very, very important part of this whole process. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say too, Steve, that um, one of the books that I'm writing right now, so I just finished a book called The Quiet Vibe Guide. As a highly sensitive person, I don't like loud noises. Many people also live in homes with children like you do, and you don't want loud sex toys. Many people live in community with roommates and they don't want their roommates to know when they're masturbating or having sex with a sex toy. So I did an exhaustive scientific study of the, with sound meters, decibel meters in cases, all enclosed, you know, all kinds of things, multi, multi-step process and found the 10 most high quality, effective, strong and rumbly, but also light and delicate sex toys as in vibrators that are available for the male body, the female body, and for partner play. It's sure. at quietvibeguide.com. Sure. Because hmm, the next book that I'm writing is called Orgasmic Cross Training. And the notion, and I got this from one of my mentors, Sherry Winston, who talked about how women become multi-orgasmic when they take the one path they have to orgasm and they start to blend in a new path. Like, for example, if you want to have nipplegasms, I love nipplegasms. I can come and come and come sure. and come and come from my nipples being played with 10 years ago. You touch my nipple, it didn't make me come at all. I just learned how. Wow. I taught myself how I orgasmically cross train. And um, the idea that you can do this with a toy really helps. What you want to do is activate the vulva and the lingam with toys. And with the lingam, I'm also talking about the prostate, the pee spot, the men's pleasure spot. His prostate is very, very pleasurable for him. For women, it's not just the clitoris, but the G spot, the perineal sponge, the outer labia, the inner labia, the mons, it's all this wonderful pleasure tissue. And there's a lot of spots in there. And using toys is the single best way that you can bring more blood flow and, cr and, and cross train so you can become massively multi-orgasmic. So the way that I taught myself to have orgasms from nipple stimulation was I stimulated my clitoris while my partner stimulated my nipples. And then pretty soon I didn't even need to touch my clitoris and my nipples were giving me the same pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's really nice because the mouth and the nipples open the yoni. So if you start with kissing and breast play, then that makes your orgasms from when you finally get down to the yoni even more intensely pleasurable. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea of using a lot of toys to activate the different areas of the genital system, mind-body connection, blows it all open. You start coming like a wild, wild, wild woman or man. <laughs> Sounds amazing. And in terms of education, when would you start with, you know, children or teenagers? I mean, they, I mean, teenagers are getting so sexualized and so are children. I think this is important to take the next generation through because I think as a, I'm a Gen Xer and I just don't think we got anything from the baby boomers at all with regards to sex and there's a lot of experimentation and, you know, then you've got different objectives between females and males. So tell us about your strategy. I mean, you're very forward thinking, all these books, all these resources, you've realized that people need skills. You need to sort of like demystify this whole area. Talk about education with children or adolescents. Yeah. So um, on betterlover.com, I have a really good dialogue with my girlfriend, Nat Kringudis from uh, Australia. And um, she is also a sex educator and she is an educational sex educator for children as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we talk about our perspectives on how to talk to your kids about sex throughout their childhood, when mm -hmm. to start, what they can handle in, as the young and then middle schoolers and then teenagers and then early adults. And um, we have different opinions about it. 
And so I think that it's really good to have a, a healthy dialogue with different, different opinions, because you're going to like some of the things she says and some of the things I say, and you're going to take out of that what you want. So if you just have um, how to talk to your kids about sex at betterlover.com, just type that in the search box yeah. and that will come up and that will answer all your questions. I think it's a, it's one of the best things I've ever done is do that, do that particular sure. conversation with Nat. Brilliant. to we'll have a link to that. Just talk about how important uh, sex is to, you know, relationship. You know, testosterone levels have decreased by 50% in our millennial generation now. I've never seen it like this before ever in 24 years of practice. It's been a real concern. Why is sexual intimacy and making love so important to relationships? Because the new generation, the millennials don't seem to, even the Gen Zs don't seem to value it like they did previously. Uh, give us your perspective on that. Two things. Number one, the reason that the testosterone has declined is a combination of overall obesity, the obesity epidemic. It's actually the obesity epidemic that has made testosterone fall. So if you are overweight, you, you're ruining your testosterone production um, and you just need to lean up again. And I, um, I think that's that's a very important thing to say is that that's what it is. There's also, of course, the toxins and the endocrine disruptors and eating out of plastic, et cetera, et cetera. But the big culprit is fat. So um, that that's just super important. You gotta mm. you gotta make muscle, not fat. You gotta transform your fat into muscle. You just gotta get moving. You gotta get going. It takes about ten weeks of working out in the gym with a trainer to save your friggin' life. Do it. Mm. That's all I can say. And you're never going to want sex unless you feel healthy. And we've already mm. said that too, Steve yeah. and I both. So, you know, I mean, tough love. Yeah. Like I'm, I look 10 or 20 years younger than my cohorts because I have great sex. I'm going to live a long time and have a great health span and sex span because I'm lean mm. and muscular and I have a good libido and I eat healthy food. Like if this is the life you want, which is a kick-ass life full of energy yeah. and intimacy, the, you, this is what you have to do. There's no shortcuts. It's not PT 141. That's not the answer. The answer is nutrition and exercise and yeah. honesty and connection. And it's interesting. I was at an event last night here in San Francisco. And I'll tell you, I really felt old. It was so funny. I was with a bunch of tech tech um, startup entrepreneurs. And um, it was about half women and half men. And um, they were all, I had a, a series of conversations throughout the evening. It was a musical recital. I had a series of conversations before the music started. And I was listening to them all. And you know what they were all talking to me about? They were all talking to me about how they felt disconnected and over technological, technologicized, <laughs> that they felt like they were not getting, they were almost all in their twenties. I don't know if anybody was in their thirties. Like mm. the guy who had the party was 23. He's like, yeah, I'm 23 now. And I'm like, 23 now? That's so cute. So <laughs> I got kids older than you. Mm -hmm. So um, they were individually not knowing what I was talking to about with anybody. All of them were talking to me about how they felt so in their head and in their devices and not in their real life. And I yeah. think there's going to be a big backlash to that mm. where people are going to be like you know how in the 60s we had the you probably don't know how in the 60s we had but in the 60s we had the revolution the love revolution and the hippie mm. generation and we wanted to tune in turn on and tune out and you know all that kind of stuff um i think that this generation is going to do that they're going to rebel against being so isolated i think that that's um it's it's on people's minds yeah. for sure what was the question that you've answered a lot of it i just the the importance <laughs> of sex and sexual intimacy in a relationship oh, because course. people don't value it anymore and i mean i just think of a lot of my clients and patients and my corporates that we work with they just say i'm so stressed it's not on my mind then i say to them make space for it because it's very valuable you know, you're going to make space for the things that you really value. You know, people don't do what they value. They do what they most value. So if you most value something, you're going to make space for it and you're going to put time and effort and you're going to spend resources on, you know, education and the sex toys and biologicals and all these type of things that you need. But it seems that they don't really realize the importance of sexual intimacy between people. Yeah, you know my opinion on that? You're not going to like this. You're going to be like, Sue's. 
come on. <laughs> Honestly, I can't save you. If if you've eaten shit and you haven't moved your body and you don't have, have the desire to have great sex and you don't care, then don't worry about it. it just mm -hmm. let it go. It's not for you. I'm not here to convince people that sex is good for them or that they should have it or that it's fun or nice. Like I can't save the world. Yeah. Who do I help? I help the people who what are what I call sexual seekers. They know there's more. That was me. I was 42 years old. I had never had an orgasm from intercourse. I was having sex with my husband for a decade. And I'm like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's like, yeah, let's get that fixed. So we fixed it and learned how, yeah. because it's all learnable. I wanted to learn how I was willing yeah. to humble myself and to say that yeah. I didn't know and to go on the learning journey. So the people who follow me are the, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to mm -hmm. talk to you today, because you will find that the people who are listening or watching this episode are the sexual seekers and the yeah. other people aren't going to listen to it and they're avoiding it. Now, the good news is that I'm almost always the number one downloaded show of any podcast <laughs> because people are intrigued by sex yeah. and they, they're holding out hope that it is possible. And then when I come on and I'm like, you can have what you want. It mm. is possible. They're just learned skills and mindset shifts. They're like, oh, okay. So it's like my personal growth and my sexual growth are the same thing. I'm in, I'm willing to learn. I, I throw myself down at your feet. Where do I start? And I say, start with the sexual soulmate pact. Learn how to ask for what you want, have your partner hear what you want and learn these basic fundamentals of the relaxation and the arousal and the spontaneous versus responsive and just coming together and learning skills together. One of the things that I recently put together, because I realized that what, and I think this is a good end to our show, actually, mm. um, unless you've got more questions. Um, no, I'm, no I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy to answer more, but I think this is a kind of a good grand finale for us, which is, you know, we've talked about the three legs of the stool, which are, we've talked about libido, desire, desire. and arousal, yeah. and that they're different. We've talked about um, the masculine versus the feminine and how we have to understand each other and compensate for each other and compensate for our own hormone hormonal you know dominance uh, if i'm testosterone dominant i'm horny i'm ready to go i'm too fast i got to slow down if i'm if i'm estrogen i have to get out of my mind and into my body and i have to allow myself the time to get turned on and not expect that i should be like my man i'm not my man i've got a woman spot you know like meet each other where you are and go from there that sex is learned skills that you can go up the pleasure spiral together so i've i've taught the the, the skills, the pleasuring skills, how to have orgasms, how to give oral, how to do, how to actually do intercourse. It's not what you see on porn. That's like, so the wrong thing to do. Um, and then the bedroom communication skills, and then the sexual health being the third, like this goal. We talked about all this stuff, but what people really want from me, Steve, is they want fun ideas of things to do to learn how to be sexier together. So I put together something that I'd love for you to take and tell me what you, what you rank high on. Um, it's called the sex life bucket list. It's at sex life bucket list.com. You can put it in the show notes yeah. and it's a PDF. I actually have it right here. It's a PDF that you download. And I don't collect your data. You know, I don't, I don't know what you're going to write on yeah. here, but it basically comes with a 40 minute video where I walk you through the 48 erotic play dates that are really fun things that help you increment your skills. And if you're single, most of them, not all, but many of them can be done solo and all of them can be done with a partner. Hmm. And it's like learning the different kinds of orgasms, yeah. doing lingerie photo shoots, um, trying a new sex toy. I mean, yeah. there's all kinds of fun things in here that um, really spice up your sex life and give you the, the notion that instead of scheduling sex, oh God, no one's ever going to schedule yeah. sex. You talk about how stressed your clients are and busy they are. No one's going to schedule sex, but they could schedule an yeah. erotic play date do something on their bucket list. And so these are all marked A, B, and C. You circle A, B, or C on each of the 48 ones. I walk you through it in the video, do it with your partner, print out two copies, run through it together, mark your A's, your B's, and your C's. A's are, I definitely would put this on my bucket list. B's are, well, it's not on my bucket list, but if Steve mm. wants to do it, I would do yeah. it with him. It'd be my pleasure. Cool. C's are, it's not for me right now. Never say never. And 
then you compare your lists, you merge your A's, you start with your age, you merge your A's and you're like, okay, here's 10 or 12 things we both want to do that we never did. Let's yeah. start there. Let's wow. learn together. Couples that play together, stay together, especially in the bedroom. And so the sex life bucket list, I think is probably a darn good place to start to see what you've got an appetite for and what you're interested in knowing and learning in your sex life, because it never, it never stops. You know, there's always something more with sex, right? Brilliant. You have distilled, deconstructed, simplified, made it possible for partners. There's resources upon resources. I think this is going to be incredibly important. You know, I speak to my schoolmates. I was at an all boys school and every single one of them says, I'm not happy with my sex life. I'm not happy with where I'm at. So it's so important and to educate the next generation. So I just declare favor and blessing over you, Susan. Thank you for your zest, your zeal, your honesty, just <laughs> true honesty and your courage in the space. I want to get those links. I want to educate myself further. I've got so much to learn and just educate the next generation and people around me. It's because uh, I'm I really believe in marriage and I believe in partnerships and I believe that people actually should come together and really have the same objectives with regards to sexual intimacy. But they're going to need the tools and then you're going to need the strategies and they're going to need the understanding. And it looks like you could almost put a degree here together. There's so much information, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'm so chuffed to have met you and hopefully we can carry on this conversation have you back on and also how to get a lot of the things that you sort of promote into south africa and africa because there's not a lot here from a health span and a sex span point of view so thank you so much